Hey, it's Frances Mills here coming to you live. As everybody you know, today I have a voice and I'm always going to speak at what's on my mind because it is my voice, my life, my experience, my understanding, my knowledge, and what I have experienced with families, friends, or people that I don't even know that actually know my ex-in-laws or my ex-husband and um, they attack you without even knowing the truth but no one's ever going to stop me to speak out because I am not ashamed of what I have been through in life from as a child through a teenage through my adult till now so first of all, i like to thank my Heavenly Father to give me this voice, to give me this strength to rise and shine and speak out. And I am a proud Torres Strait Islander woman, a woman. I never, never forget where I'm from. And sometimes I like to mentor another woman out there because I sabe a lot of island women out there have experience and they do watch my videos. Sometimes they plus feel, but I tell you, all them women out there, don't ever feel ashamed if you're a victim or if you've been through something that it's horrible. Or if you have been traumatized, you know, for things that you have experienced, you know, with families, uh, with relatives, uh, with your partner. Um, I'm always going to listen and, and advise you know, for all women, because we strong women, when we think about it, we are very strong. When you've been through a lot of things in your life, you come out the other end stronger. But I will tell you, and I will be honest with you, Pla, I am kind person. Inside with me, I can see through people, body language, the expression, because when I used to work at Cleveland Youth Detention Center, this is how we do. We alert, we observe, we study. But it's not only that. I've always been like that. The older I get, when I dream, when I see things, when I see people, because when I talk, I talk from here and I speak the truth because when I be small girl growing up, I always get a belching pass before I talk. You are not allowed to lie. This is so true. So, I don't um, see myself as a threat, maybe for others, because we're all speak our minds. And I've got the right to speak out because too long I've been shut down by all island when I was in a relationship with. It wasn't good. It was never loved. For me, it was like a slave, you know? So people, families will never understand that, but you know, I am me today and who I am. And I always going to have a strong voice and to speak out. Okay, this topic I wanna to talk about is, um, I'm gonna continue the video that I made about uh, when I had a dream about my dad. I could talk about what it meant to us, me and all my siblings. I will mention all my siblings because it doesn't matter how things were very disciplined and strict, but the respect how we've been brought up by our parents, they when I be speak when we listen 
of family Tolanti Zikarian me parent now parents my mom and dad always speak forgive them pla and I used to feel sorry for my parents you know mainly for my dad because how he was growing up as a as a child or as a young boy and the age of 13 going out on the boat like you know that's like just still a, a kid because I remember like my brother and deceased now he was 15 when I did work when my dad was Stephen Davis. He was the youngest one. <laughs> he was my dad crew, at the age of 15. But anyway, we be got off from small, so we saw what time. So, to see my dad, how he was as a father or as a son as a grandson for my great grandmother and knowing that you know there is a family reunion coming up our kids but for me I see myself and my siblings like we've been treated like an outcast And um, we have to remember, like, in my dad's time, he was the oldest and the big one. But for whatever he went through growing up and be born with Badu, they become full. Paris blame will be good back for Naki. But the respect my dad had for his grandmother, his grandfather, his father, his mother, his siblings, all his aunties. Bigaka, Bigaka Nero. You know, we never had a car when we flew to We used to cross from Appland through cemetery, go up on the hill, go down, go up where my Bigaka is stuck. used to be in a line that had mom, me, and all my siblings. People used to see that. But we put us up in muck around. But we were so happy that we knew that we were going to go see a big aka, a canero, a kapat, a kasana. We couldn't wait. We couldn't wait to go there, you know, it was like, it was so lovely to have biscuit and milk. We used to go there, we used to jump on Akka's bed and she was a tall lady, dark lady with a grey hair. We used to jump on her bed. Dad used to take the check up, sit down next to him and kiss every one of me pla. Then my dad would speak, okay, you plug on now. But I also there with mom. And my tuna daka was so lovely. Oh, precious. 
is to give us biscuit, alawood biscuit, ginger bread biscuit with milk, oseo. They used to sit on the floors and there was crack in the middle. And me and my siblings, we used to play cards, try to build houses. Or Aka would give us powder, just a little bit powder to sprinkle on the floor and we could play sliding games. But we were very careful what we were doing. But that was the love, unconditional love of my big Aka, Mary, and my two Aka, Aka San and Aka Pat. My dad, Mina, loved Dempla. My dad can sit down with my big Aka and them to talk. Hey, Langus play. They had that bond, very close bond. It was like, you would not believe it, we played, but the time that he spent with her, then we would leave. Same thing, afternoon time, late in the afternoon, maybe 5, 30, 6 o'clock. We lying all the way. Over the cemetery, go back home. The respect, that's what I want to talk about there. The respect my dad had. My dad had so much respect for all his brothers and sister and cousin sisters and cousin brothers, aunties and uncle. I'm going to share this because it's really fucking my head. You know, when you've been treated like an outcast, I grew up seeing that. My daddy and my mama. But I think my dad had so much anger inside of him. There, that nickname was given to him, I think, by his dad, my auntie, Buffet. Nobody can stop him. My name this one. Only him dad and my mom. And you know, I'm going to share this because a lot of man that I heard from the horse's mouth actually was there and they saw how my dad was. Them probably big man when they spoke to me and they told me how they looked my dad in action. They were not church man, but we'll be proper pride for my dad when we'll be looking. Dad was only 5'8", five 5'9". Five that man, I think, could have been 6'1". Then play in look with kind. My dad dropped him. The main street of T.I. It can see now for when he was a child growing up he couldn't say boo but when he got older and come become a man when him this one everything just come out he fought with his brother-in-law Federal hotel, hit for hit all the way down the beach. 
this is from people that saw him. And my dad's, I'm sorry, my mum's brother, he's tall. He's about six something. You know, you can see that how he was a man. He had so much anger inside of him. So when them people he would look like fight to him, he would go 100 kilometers or 110 kilometers. And this is no lie. There, my mom's brother, one and only brother, hit for hit from Federal Hotel all the way down the beach. My dad buried Ed Blim in so his son, the best man, walked away. And Pastor Sakim, she told him, she him and walked away. That's all that anger from when he was a child. Another one is cousin brother. My mum cousin brother, first cousin. Same thing in front of Royal Hotel. Hit for hip and drop him. He walks away. Dad had an history of how he was. He never lost the fight. And he was one of the strongest men in the Torres Strait and the best seaman. And Sabi the water. And I'm the only skipper can take a boat come inside Torres Strait, TI. You want to zap morning time. My mom will look Stephen Day Vasanka behind the airplane. You play imagine growing up back in the islands. Why Garam Garstab the cave and none of my uh, Sisters blow my or brother blow my Ate, well, mainly all them Ate was out on the boat, but all them sisters, Sakakala, them blah. Why couldn't they take him to their house? But they couldn't. But why? Dad would rather be in the cave. This is trauma. This is a young boy grew up. And like I say, I know what it feels like not to be loved. Because my dad never been loved. And I wonder why. And why my dad always been classed as an outcast. And Nipla has been classed as an outcast. That's why when I stand up and I talk, I want to remind families. One thing been happened in those days with their parents or whoever. Inoblo Nipla put say this and that. Oh, we know they, this new blue, yeah. Oh, no, no, we're too good for yous. He's all black skin. Oh, no, we don't want to be with yous. Oh, no, but yous all trouble. But you cannot got the respect and love like how we can be grow. Doesn't matter how my dad was, but he loved his father. He loved all his uncle. He loved at the song. He loved at the victim. Yupro family, Yupro will never understand 
what it feels like to be an outcast. In this kind of time, when a family member you pass away, if your uncle you pass away or your auntie, you're gonna be picking any from it. For stana, for poor mirror or whatever. That's a proper way. That's what culture proud of call. You don't put somebody aside because Hippler only think like somebody Hippler. I will share this with my Aka or Sakani, my great grandmother. My great grandmother, my dad's grandmother. My dad always work and support my great grandmother and their mother. Well, my dad was my ate, right hand, right handed. I begin and I understand and I look things. My dad become bigger from port, and we work well and too, and been skipper for your dad, and we come back. So I gotta have some of this. Mm. When then we come back, dad went and had few beers. Dad came back and we were in the, as you come and I could step the front door, sorry, the back door. There's the dining table there and there's another door and there's the kitchen. And Dad was standing right there at the door and we were right inside, no, sorry, outside. And, um, and we can see very clear and dad was talking to Aka, my great grandmother, and my another uncle and brother, now deceased. And he was, you know, with pissed too. But dad was more pissed. My mom was away in Cairns because my other sister was very sick. And we stayed with our grandmother. But we plus spend when my grandfather wasn't around. It would be small. We could spend a lot of time outside in, in the yard playing. But we always go over to our great grandmother because they want to see out for me for it, making for something for Kai Kai. And we used to play just there where she could see us. But she was our great grandmother. Then when that incident happened, where my Uncle will say something to my dad, and when my dad will say something, and my uncle will pat on him, and why? And be hitting my dad, punch my father, and my father be folded in, hit him, head guard with us, outside with the ground, and my Akabin, my great Akabin thing, you know come for my dad because my dad didn't black out. Mind you, he, he was drunk. Thank God. And um, and we were all crying. Now this is so true, I can remember because I did one. We were all crying. Daddy, daddy, go around him. Daddy, daddy, Nanaka was there, you know, trying to think. And my grandmother, at her house, looking at the window and calling out to us, we brought black pikinini, black skin pikinini, or black man and black woman, calling out to us, get away from him, you brought bastard pikinini, get away from him. We cried, we were scared. 
all my siblings were crying and I tried to comfort all my siblings. And she stood at the window in the house in so much anger, screaming at us. Only my big I could speak, not take notice. You plug her inside the house. I got think for dad. You plus C? Like, you are calling out <laughs> to his grandchildren, call me Paul, bastard picking me. Get away from Father Bleupla. While we actually saw what happened, and another uncle just walked away and went over to a parent's house and left my tati the line with their grandmother trying to wake him up, throw water on him, crying as we were crying. Now who fucking do that? You think the mother could come and check on him older son? But I think if the father been there, oh yes, oh yes, my heart would come. My dad had a really bad temper. But I know, just like me, when you've been ground, you know, blind surviving, you want to put your down. And I still do that to my elders. But if my elders going to disrespect me and treat me with so much hate and disrespectful because I speak the truth, I will cut you down. Because we always been treated outcast. My dad loved them siblings and all them cousin brothers and sisters. I go share this one too. My uncle be making that Torres Strait flag. Uncle Bernard. And be speak for me, come up from horse's mouth. Honey, I proper fright from you, dad. I fear you, Dad. And I speak for him. Uncle Bernard, why? You speak for me. No. Your dad got me in a bad temper. And I said, you don't have to be scared of Dad. It's like when Dad drink, Uncle Bernard used to get scared. Because I'm seeing Dad in action. But when I think about it, my dad loved them. My dad was always going to protect them. My dad never been so negative to them or say bad things to him, cousins, brothers and sisters. He loved his sister. But why have we been treated outcast? Like there's a Morrison family reunion coming up next month or this month. Have we been invited have we been told as the eldest granddaughter who runs Aka Ani and Ate Freddy who's the voice are we going to be treated outcast like my father has been always another thing I will share with you Paul. My Aka brother, son, my uncle. Okay. Somebody. I was still married to my second husband and we were up at Birmingham for his father's funeral. So when we went to the airport, he got my first ex-husband was there with this girlfriend yeah yeah me and my husband sit down this guy that ex-husband the father of my children 
with the girlfriend walk past me. That part of my bikini you go around him, make it just can't put that. Man, when you my man stand up, say can I blame her? Think for that old man blame. I see that. But when I look for that old man, when I smile for him, was cut me. It's a very poor kind of people they look, but you know, you see this kind of like a stupid demon, them people are upside down. Them people think this kind of eyes zealous. Who zealous for? Please, whatever. So, anyway, playing pull up. Would they come out passing that ex stand up and the girlfriend blame? I sit on the right front. So, so good. My uncle woke up, shaken and blown, the father of my children, and half that woman. I see them there, was in my uncle. And then Yawa then to walk straight past and go come go walk past me. I look for my sinner. Hey, Uncle Philip. I'm looking, hey, funny girl. So I turn, I speak. Your uncle, this one, husband, blow me. Harrison Bamak, and go this game. <laughs> when I go this game. <laughs> Okay, then I'll see you later. I said, okay, no worries. Then go. I sit and I say, yeah, fucking idiot. So I was really upset. The body language where I'm going just going to walk past me without even saying boo to me as his niece. Firstly, my dad, first cousin. Hello, Australia. Anyway, so I, um, Rang my sister up, I was devastated. And how I was treated, you know, with, you know, at the airport with my ex, you know, with my husband, you know. Didn't even acknowledge me as his wife or, you know, just being an arsehole. But anyway, so rang my sister, I was over the moon, I was crying, you know, I was upset. My husband wanted to hit me, wanted to run the car into the bloody bushes. This is for Bamaga, you know, the airport, right? So when my sister rang him, this is what I am saying for my sister. Oh, it was real sensitive. What the fuck has got to do with you? I'm your niece. Why do you have to put that man first before me and that woman. This is so wrong. You see what I mean, people? This is so wrong. This is not the first time he this, did this to me. Second time when he, that father of my picnic, he be passed away. I gotta become inside. Hey, I mother bro, then picnic, but that man been dead. I'm only there for my children. Oh, all them relatives didn't like that. They just wanted the girlfriend to be there, not the mother of the children. But anyway, I got to come. My two girl there, I also don't walk a come and say with that people. Them. them to speak to me, mom, go inside, sit down there inside. That's all okay. I got to go. You get that? Man, boy, baby girl, go me sit down. So, my them sit down there with the end. As you come down, at the other end, you got that uncle, and the same uncle, Philip. I got to come sit down next to that son in law room. You got a big space if you don't have it. I think every cunt is done or feel me uncomfortable. What's that got to do with him? You see the lateral violence? And I'm supposed to be his bloody niece. And this is how I got treated by my uncle. The respect I have for my uncle. But this is how he treated me. 
it felt so uncomfortable. The guy didn't even look at but I know him sit down there. You know what he did? He got up, walked up, because he got that girlfriend blame sit down behind that the cousin sister blame and the demon the man blame for the sit down behind. And walk up to me, speak for me. Love you, Fanny. And I said, I love you too. And because stand up there outside. <laughs> now at the cemetery, his younger brother come up to me. Come kiss me. Then reckon, oh, I'm sick. My dad's brother will look around for you. Oh, it didn't look good enough, eh? Like them plot there, these are my uncle, my dad's first cousin, my dad's brother. I need for them plot. I be grow with them plot. If my dad brother was looking for me, he didn't look good, eh? I didn't even get to see him. This is how your own family can treat you. Because why you were an outcast. Now, think about it, people. Think about it. We're supposed to be cultural people. We're supposed to be respectful people. Respect one another. Learn from their elders. Respect your elders. Respect your auntie. Respect your uncle. Respect your parents. Your grandparents, your parents, your grandparents, or whoever that you're in that big boy, family boy. But you see, them kind of people got too much pride. They, they don't even know that man. When it came to be served in the military. But you see, this is twice my uncle did that to me. The only uncle that ever, ever growled me out of all my dad's cousin is the one we not long passed away. Yeah. Well, in Townsville. And I forgot to share that when I was done up. Because the love and the respect I have for that uncle. And big boy, we get married for a moment. I know been go. When him be look me up, speak for me. Any girl. How come you know be come for call a boy blame and woman blame? Wedding. Before I go answer, I don't want to listen. No excuse. You should be calm. You know what I did? I just put my head down and I didn't say a thing or answer by again. Because he ground me. And it's the truth. I had no excuse. And from that day on, it's the first uncle or auntie ever growled me. And I be forget to shake her when I be stand up and I be talk. I be carried that for so many years inside with me feeling so guilty. He caught me out. I had no excuse to go to my cousin brother wedding in Oman Blim. But MB ground me for right reason. And I took that in and I I have to be guilty. I was guilty. Even when I see him, when we come together, I felt guilty because it's the truth. And be growl me for proper something, for right thing. Because when I be go, when I've been married now 11 years ago, when I be go for him, for ask him and him, auntie, the wife, blame him, if them to can cook and them to go sit on the main table where me to represent me. For Bowie family, Ateben, Bowie, Bamalas, Akayansi, Savage Bowie, Uncle Freddy, and Auntie Deb. People that I love and I respect. Em no be hesitate, em no be remind me or speak no, em be speak yes, then again, we go do it. And we're honored to sit with main table. It meant so much to me. That is why the love, unconditional love I have for that uncle. 
If from here, I ain't a part from me. And I'm the only uncle from small comes can I be gone and I'm the only one been grow me. And I take full responsible for my action. And I felt guilty and I should be guilty. This is how my dad was. If them do something wrong and be accountable for his action. If them part the growling, him could take responsibility. But he was a very disciplined person. And be show me pla the respect to respect your elders, to respect your grandparents, doesn't matter how we have been treated badly. Call me Paul Bastard Picnini, you Paul Nugut Picnini. Because why wear black skin? But Nipla or Picnini, but father, that Nipla do everything. Nipla will help clean the house. Nipla will that here, but Nipla do it because of love. We don't care. We've been abused by our Akka, not our great grandmother. We used to run go for him. My great grandmother, she was beautiful and fragile and lovely Afro gray hair and and them shine and them show you that love. We used to hold her, we used to play with the hair, and we used to make me to sleep in yarn. Dogai story, not devil dogai because I go yarn you claw dogai story. We were safe with them. We felt love. But the respect there. You know, how my dad was growing up. And go outside with a watcher. The boy, when he was 13. And when he become big man, younger, and we carry that inside with him. So when he fought with men, or in in-laws, or any man in the fight, and release that anger blowing him. And he was one strong man, very strong man. And, and I will say it, he, he, he was. And the way I am today, It makes me think, why, why, why? Like they can be speak, honey, lucky you girl, you know boy. I be growing in a hard life. And this is a man, a man with so many kids crying, talking about his childhood. So when he come older, when he fought with men, he released all that pain. But he was one good man and a strong island man. And this is what I wanted to share, the respect we have for all our aunties and uncle, but we have been treated an outcast. That actually, same as my dad. When he was something bad, I put him one side. But it doesn't worry him. But only him know and all them loved one, all them elders that in his time that loved him. A big akanero, akasana, akapata, akakala, 
Kano was something to us. And I was given to them and at the time I wish I would have just stayed with them. But who go with dinghy morning time with your families and spend all day and night till morning hour and, and jump in the dinghy and go back from Prince Royal to TI? That's love. That's love. More than we get treated, call on bastard picking in while your father lied, knocked out by his brother. But anyway, this is true. And what I say about what happened when my father fought with men, these were men was there that saw and told me what they see. And some, it's unreal. But it's the truth. One I go life for. But have you ever been treated like an outcast? Have you ever been say to you and your sibling, you plot a bastard picking in? Are you KK? Give me a KK? When mama be your plan out there? Or daddy be your plan out there? Where you play all day on the wait for your big uncle for sinner to be okay. Hello. And said, yeah. Wow. It is what it is.